We always spend a lot of time to create more realistic interactions, uh, to give uh, the more real feelings to the user that interacting with our prototype and actually decrease the gap between our prototype and the final product. In this video, I'm going to show you a plugin that will help us to design and create more realistic interactions and animation inside the Figma. My name is Kia and here's the Kimo. Welcome to another episode of the Kimo Lab. A while ago, I published a video about 12 cool features of the Framer prototyping tools. If you didn't have a chance to watch that video, now you can check it out by clicking on the banner on top somewhere here and try to see the other cool features that the Framer has. In that video, I explained to you that one of the cool features of the uh, Framer is the possibility of creating the asset and element based on the JavaScript coding, which lets you to create more realistic interactions and in result, uh, the, the prototype that you are creating has the look and feelings that the final product will have. Now we have the Prototyper plugin inside the Figma that will help us to do the same thing here in the Figma. Prototyper is a plugin based on the open source Framer library JavaScript framework that will help us to do the same thing inside the Figma. Basically, it's not a really new concept. We had this before. Uh, in the Framer, now we have it inside the Figma. After we get familiar with the Prototyper, uh, I'm gonna create a simple user interface uh, elements um, uh, using the plugin and also without plugin, and we will compare these two together and see which one is more realistic. And at the end, I will evaluate and share uh, my experience in the real world with you. So get sure to stick until the end of this video. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's check out the Prototyper website. Immediately after you land in this website, you can see some demos, which is showing to you how the Prototyper plugin is going to work by showing some simple, uh, let's say, JavaScript example and uh, the running demo right in front of your eyes. The very first good thing is that it has a really rich and complete documentation that will help the designer without uh, coding and JavaScript knowledge uh, to just focus on creating their prototype by following the documentation. In addition, you can download the Playground Figma file from the Figma community. There you have access to four examples uh, and you can play with the code and try to adjust uh, the demos and see how this prototyping tool is working. The good thing is that uh, the demos are working pretty well. For example, this draggable handle uh, or uh, this uh, simple interaction that you can see here with the animation. Uh, and you can check the code behind it. This will help you to learn uh, using JavaScript in order to create such interaction easier. In addition, you can actually use uh, this code in order to create your own a user interface element with uh, specific uh, interaction and behavior that you're looking for. I recommend you, if you are not really familiar with JavaScript, just try to check out uh, these examples and try to understand the logic behind the code, which will be helpful later on when you want to create your own elements. Let's just start to design this slider without any plugin and just using the prototyping features inside the Figma. I'm gonna start the process of creating the slider by just adding a frame to my canvas. And then I'm adding another uh, rectangle into my frame. And uh, I increase the uh, border radius um, in order to create a more curvy filling. And I align it to the center. This is going to be the track of our slider. Now it's time to create our handles by uh, just adding a rectangle uh, to our frame and also increase the um, border radius a bit. I change the color and then I add a bit of shadow to it in order to uh, create depth of fill. Now I'm just copying this frame and making a duplicate from it. Um, in the next step, I just rename all the layers in order to manage my uh, layer list. And then in the second frame, I uh, push the handle all the way to the right side. Now I'm going to the prototype uh, panel and I just uh, connect the handle in the first layer to the uh, right frame and I put the interaction uh, type on drag uh, and the animation type to the uh, smart animate. I do the same thing for the right handle. Now if we run the uh, prototype, we will see that uh, this square is uh, draggable to the right and left. 
Now it's time to use the prototyper and see how we can create the same effect in animation and interaction using JavaScript inside of Figma. First step is to install the prototyper plugin uh, in our Figma. So the first thing I'm going to the community and then search for the plugin prototyper. Let's click on try it out. And then we automatically will redirect to the Figma and this plugin panel would be open and we can just click on the run. This is the prototyper user interface. Now I'm uh, making another page in the Figma and I copy paste uh, the slider that we made in the previous step into this, uh, let's say, page. When I run the plugin and I select the frame, you can see that uh, we can see the frame in the uh, prototyper demo. Now I'm starting uh, to make the uh, handle, um, uh, let's say, draggable by writing this code. The name of the layer, which is the handle, that draggable, that enable, that true. But as you can see, now this handle is draggable everywhere. We don't want such a thing. I'm going to limit the movement to the just horizontal axis by just writing this code that the handle, that draggable, that vertical equal false. Now I'm going to write a piece of code that would limit the movement of the handle to its own track. I'm going to define a weight for this movement by just adding this piece of code. But as you can see, we can drag the handle still out of its track. I add another line of code, handle.draggable dot over drag equal false, which means now we cannot over drag uh, the handle uh, out of the limitation that we defined up there. Now the prototype is ready, and as you can see, user can drag and drop uh, the handle wherever he wants on his own, uh, let's say, uh, track. But the prototype that we made uh, in the Figma without prototyper plugin, a uh, user cannot uh, uh, actually drag and drop the uh, handle wherever he wants and it will automatically stick to the left or right. And now you see the difference between two versions that we made. In practice and real project, we are creating the prototypes uh, just to be able to test and prove our ideas in the earliest stages uh, with the minimum uh, cost, uh, which means we want to spend less time and less money and we want to be more flexible to change the things and try out different ideas uh, that we can bring in our, uh, let's say, product. One of the disadvantages of using JavaScript is basically that it's increasing the complexity uh, of a prototyping process. If you want to be able to do such a thing, you need to know a minimum level of knowledge of the uh, JavaScript. And also you need to spend a lot of time to develop more realistic and complex interactions. This is not a bad thing, but the thing you need to consider is that you need to always keep the balance between the cost and the uh, level of the realism in your prototype. You should not sacrifice the time and money to create really full realistic prototype because at the end, it's just a playground and it's not going to be the final thing. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it, leave a comment and let me know which type of videos you like to see more in this channel. And at the end again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.